Chapter 23 of the Emblems of the Holy Guardian Angels in their intercourse with the Blessed Mary and of their perfections. It has already been said that a thousand angels were appointed as guardians of Mary, just as there is one for each soul. On account of the great dignity of the Most Holy Mary, we must assume that each of the thousand guardian angels watched over Mary more solicitously than other guardian angels watch over other souls. Besides these thousand angels, who formed her ordinary and constant guard, many others were at her service on different occasions, especially after she had conceived in her womb the Divine Word incarnate. I have mentioned above, number 204, that the selection of these thousand angels was made after the creation of the angelic hosts and after the justification of the good and fall of the bad. The divinity of the word, to be clothed in its human nature, and also his most pure mother, was proposed and manifested to them while they were yet in the state of probation. They were then made to understand that they were to revere them as their superiors. When the apostate angels were chastised and the faithful ones rewarded, the Lord proceeded according to a most just measure in equity. As I said, in the accidental reward, there was a certain diversity among the angels according to the difference in their dispositions regarding the mysteries of the incarnate word and his most pure mother, which were made known to them before and during the probation. This accidental reward consisted especially in being selected to assist and serve the Most Holy Mary and the Incarnate Word, and also in the manner and form of their visible appearance to the Queen and of serving her. This is what I wish to explain in this chapter, but at the same time I must acknowledge my inability to do so, since it is difficult to reduce to material images and words the perfections and the operations of such exalted spiritual beings. Nevertheless, if I should pass over this matter in silence, I would fail to give a proper idea of a great portion of the most exalted operations of the Queen of Heaven during her mortal life. For next to her intercourse with the Lord, that with his ministers, the angelic spirits, was the most continual. Therefore, without the mention of this intercourse, the history of her life would be defective. I presuppose all that I have until now said about the orders, hierarchies, and distinctions of the thousand angels of her guard, but I wish here to describe in what corporeal forms they appear to their queen and mistress. The intellectual and imaginary apparitions I reserve for another chapter where I intend to describe especially the different kinds of visions with which Her Highness was favoured. The nine hundred angels which were chosen from the nine choirs, one hundred from each, were selected from the number of those who had distinguished themselves by their esteem, love, and reverence for the Most Holy Mary. They were made visible to the Blessed Virgin under the form of young men in their early years, but of the most exquisite beauty and courteousness. Their bodily forms showed but little resemblance to earthly matter, for they were transparently pure and like animated crystals, bathed in glory, similar to a glorified and transfigured body. With their beauty, they combined a grave and amiable composure. Their garments covered them in flowing folds, but were resplendent, like the most clear burnished gold, enameled or stained with exquisite shades of colour, presenting a most wonderful and varied beauty to the sight. At the same time, all this ornament and visible presence seemed of such a kind that it could not be subject to the sense of feeling, nor be touched by the hand, although it could be seen and perceived like the rays of the sun, entering into the open window and revealing the atoms of dust in the air. But the splendor of the angels was incomparably more beautiful and pleasing than any light of the sun. 
In addition, all these angels were crowned with wreaths woven of the most tender and exquisite flowers that sent forth the sweetest fragrance, not of this earth, but altogether spiritual and heavenly. In their hands, they held palms of wonderful beauty and variety, which were to signify the virtues which Most Holy Mary was to exercise, and the victories which she was to gain by her sanctity and glory. All this they, as it were, offered her beforehand with great joy and jubilation. On their breasts they bore certain devices or emblems, such as we are accustomed to see exhibited in the uniforms or habits of the military orders. They contained letters which stood for Mary, Mother of God, and which contributed much toward the splendor of their adornment and beauty. Their significance, however, was not made known to Mary until the moment of the incarnation of the Word.